I'm at my graduation and I answer it and it's Schultz's big fucking nose <laughs> like this. And he's like, Chifty. He was like, I was like, what's, what's up, bro? And he was like, come to New York City and work for us. I was like, okay. And then he was like, okay, bye. And then he hung up and my dad was like, wait, you're gonna move to New York City? And I was like, yeah. Walk me back to you finding out that Schultz has an editing competition. Okay. And you eventually winning it and landing the job. So I was 16. Okay. Uh, mid pandemic, high school shut down. I'm by myself in my room all day just doing stupid bullshit classes. Okay. And I'm editing at this point for a couple of YouTubers at the time. And I'm like bored. And I'm a fan of Flagrant. Okay. So I was like, all right, I listen to the podcast. And I'm like sitting next to my grandma. <laughs> on the couch watching flagrant which don't watch flagrant with your grandma but <laughs> i am and she's sitting next to me and he says like at the end of the podcast yo guys we're doing an editing competition people who make the most fire shit submit your edits or whatever right, right. and my grandma's like oh you should do that your grandma said that yeah and i was like i was like nah and then she was like no you you really should and i was like maybe Go to bed. It's Tuesday. I go to bed. I wake up Wednesday morning. I open up Instagram and Schultz is like, re all the guys reposting all yeah. the people submitting their clips. And there's some good ones. Yeah. But I'm looking at the ones that are putting fire emojis next to you. And I'm like, okay. all right, come on. What is this? You know, <laughs> what's going on here? <laughs> and so I was like, fuck it. I mean, I could do something better than that. So I might as well at least try. Okay. So, and there were some good ones better than mine. Like, I'm not saying I was the best. Yeah. But the average, I was like, all right, I could maybe make something work, you know? Okay. So I, I'm in geography, no, government class. Wild. And I just mute my teacher Okay. and then started editing. And I spent like four hours on it then submitted my clip and then logged off of school, went to the gym, came back and Schultz DM me. And he was like, bro, this shit's fire. And I was like, all right, sick. And then I got so excited. I like ran downstairs and told my dad because I told him I was in this editing competition. Yeah. And at this point, my parents didn't take editing seriously. Okay. They're like, you're going to have to go to college. You're going to study like engineering. You're in high like, school. Yeah, I'm in high school. Okay. I'm 16 at the time. Wild. And I'm like, dad, dad, Andrew just texted. And he's like, ah, oh, it's great. I'm happy for you, buddy. Like, whatever. <laughs> like, my parents always try to support me. Yeah. They just don't get it. And, and so <laughs> I'm like, dad, I did it. He's like, all right, well, what is he going to say? And I like texted Schultz like, all right, what's going on? Like, like I'm all excited. I'm just a kid. Like I'm texting him, and then he just ghosts me, and it's like three weeks go by, and then I get a text from Al on Instagram or he DM, and he's like, hey man, d do another one, or something like that, and because they had like, they narrowed down like out of all the clips like a top ten list, okay, and so I submitted again, and then they were like, oh this is fire. And then I was like, oh, sick. And I like DM all, all the people and then ghost. Again? Okay. Yeah. Now it's November. That in competition was in September. Okay. So I'm like, all right, whatever. Like I kind of give up. January rolls around. Yeah. It's been two months. I've completely given up. I'm making okay money on yeah. the side, like editing videos. Nothing crazy. And, and I get a DM from Al. Yeah. And he's like, brother, what's your email? And I remember getting the, the DM. And at this point, I'm... I, I kept always saying after I got ghosted, like, yeah. I, I don't care do anymore. Time, do and then I'd time. get the DM and then flip out. Yeah. So I told my mom, I was like, Mom, I'm moving to New York City. Wait, what was the DM? It was, what's your email? That's all it said. Okay. What's your email? And I literally just can't remember coming to my mom. I went, Mom, I'm moving to New York City. This is over. Like, I, I got the job. And she's like, what are you talking about? And I was like, I got it. And she, she was like, all right, whatever. And because they didn't take Wait, it seriously. Wait, hold on. At this point, you, didn't have, you, you haven't received the email yet, though? No. Okay. I just, I just sent the DM. Just like like projecting it. Yeah, I was just I was just speaking okay. into existence. Yeah, okay. I get the email from Al and it is a copy and pasted email that they probably sent to 50 people. Oof. And it's like, "Hey guys, thanks so much. Sorry for waiting. We were working on they were doing the Schultz Saves America at the time." Oh, the so Netflix that's why they were busy. Okay, yeah. And they were like, "Sorry for not getting back to you and ghosting you guys. <laughs> uh congratulations. You're in the top fucking 50 editors that Oof. we picked." So now I'm feeling like dog shit. Do you know who Sneeko is? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he made like a YouTube video saying like... About why I didn't take the job. Why I didn't take the job. Yeah. He knew what it meant to me. He was aware of what I do. And he still offered me a disrespectful amount of money. And not even him. 
his cameraman. So I said no, camera guy said I, and that was it, never spoke to him again. So. He got the same email as everybody else. Okay. He was like, I got the, he got the same email. The one he's complaining about. Yeah. And it was said, you get $50 okay. for a clip. Okay. And we'd send you more clips if you wanted it. So I saw the email. Yeah. I watched Nico's video. Yeah. And I was like, fuck Andrew Schultz. Like, he doesn't like me. Like, I can't believe that he would do this to me. Me. How could he do this to me? A 16 year old kid. <laughs> and so <laughs> I talked to my dad. I was like, dad, I'm not going to do it. And he was like, oh, you gotten this far. I mean, you might as well try it twice. Like, $50. He's like, yeah. so what? You're not doing it for the money. Yeah. He's like, what else do you have Wait, to do? Wait, your dad said that? Yeah. Okay, cool. That's a super cool insight you have. For you. Yeah. yeah okay. And I was like, fine. Like, I'll do it. So I, like, got a better attitude. And I, like, messaged back. And I was like, thank you guys so much. Um, and this is after a week of me, like, thinking about this. Thank you guys so much. Like, I appreciate it so much. Thank you guys. Like, it means the world to me that you'd offer me this opportunity. Like, just so much fluff. And then I just said, I'd love to. And then didn't get a fucking email from Al for four months. <laughs> Again? Wait, Again. what month is this at this point? This is January. I sent an email in January. Yeah. And didn't get anything else. So back the though. back and forth started in what, September? September. And now it's January. Now it's January. Right. And I sent the email. Okay. And then nothing. Again. Wow. No, radio silence. Okay. And I'm seeing people upload clips that they're doing for Schultz. And it's like he's reposting or something. He's like reposting that. people's okay. clips that they're sending him, yeah. but they're not sending me any clips. Mm. So this one, I'm like, fuck. What is going on? What am I doing wrong? You know, like, I can't believe this. And I gave up and I just kind of was like, all right, well, high school is going to start back up again. At this yeah. point, COVID was kind of chilling out. Yeah. So I was like, all right, I'll just I'll have fun in high school for the last four months because I fucked off in high school and didn't care and during COVID. And so I wasn't gonna go to college. So I might as well have fun in my last three months oh, of yeah. high school. And then April, I got a text message from Al. I never gave him my phone number. And he was like, hey, Chif is this Chifty? And I was like, yeah. And he was like, "We, I have a studio WTF Media. Um, can you edit clips for me? Mm. I have this podcast called Bible Stories with Priyanda. Um, you should edit clips for it. I'll pay you like 50 bucks. And I was like, another $50 clip, all right, whatever. But it's maybe if I make clips so fire, Schultz will see them. Okay. And then maybe I'll get more clips sent to me. Okay. So he sends me a clip. I spend 12 hours on it okay. and just... Wait, one clip? One clip. What was the output? Like, how long of a clip did he want? Did 60 he... seconds. Okay. So it was 12 hours and do a 60-second clip. I sent it, and he was like, this is fucking amazing. Al says that. Yeah. Okay. And I was like, yes. And then he was like, all right. He sent me two more. And then I just started doing one every night when I got home from school. And then he started sending me more. Yeah. So at this point, I'm like part-time WTF media employee under the books. So just making clips for these podcasts. And I'm fucking just starting to edit at school. <laughs> like I have my laptop in. I remember being in statistics class, like with my laptop down here yeah. and getting in trouble. So I went outside, plugged my laptop in, asked to go to the bathroom and then any desks onto my, my laptop <laughs> from my phone and kept editing. And I would just do that every day. And still got to be in that class, though. So we did something. Impressive. We did yeah, something. Okay, cool. But, um, yeah, I'm editing for Al. And this now it's, it's May. Oof. Still editing for Al. Okay. For, I think at this point it was like $70. Okay. And oh, sure, that's good. I was doing, yeah, $70 a day pretty much. Yeah. And I'm just like fucking I'm running on three hours of sleep. I'm working at Home Depot at this point. So I'm doing the night shift at Home Depot, moving refrigerators. Are you and still like 18, 16? What's your age at this point? 18. 18. No. 18 I'm 18. Cool. So this has been two years at this okay. point. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, all right, like, fuck it. I tried. I'm fucking exhausted. It's been two months. Yeah. Like, I'm not really getting anywhere with Al. Um, but I'm in his good graces at least. Okay. At this point, I start like messaging Miles. Okay. I didn't even know who Miles was, but I rewatched the special okay. in like March and saw his name, Miles McCreary, graphics producer. He had like a thousand followers. And so I followed him and messaged him right away. I was like, bro, so you did such a good job on, on your, uh, Schultz, Save your Schultz Saves America thing. And I would just swipe up on every story he put. I would just like fire emoji, fire emoji, like fire just emoji. keep, yeah. Shifty is just in his brain. Yeah. And so he, he followed me back finally, and he would start seeing the edits I was doing for Al and the edits I was doing for other people. And then he, like, messaged me and was like, bro, we need brilliant idiot clips. Okay. Schultz has no clue who I am. Okay. 
And so then I start editing Brilliant Idiot clips at the same time as doing WTF. So I'm doing three clips a day that are taking me like five hours because I want them all to be fire. Nice. And I'm just, I'm not even in school anymore. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> school doesn't exist for me. Um, nothing exists. I'm at Home Depot editing in the bathroom. <laughs> like it's got, it got that bad. It used to be Econ class and now you're in Home Depot just like editing clips. Yes. And yeah, everything, I was just, it was not sustainable. Yeah. I'm falling apart, and then out of the blue, I get, I like, Schultz starts, fo he followed me. Wild. So I'm, now I'm. What was that like? Dude, I remember being in a thrift shop parking lot. Okay, specific. Yeah. <laughs> and well, it was very vivid. Yeah. Got the notification, yeah. and I just drove home, yeah. and then like told my dad, dude, Schultz just followed me, and he's like, oh, that's cool. <laughs> like, that's. That's good. I'm happy for you, buddy. That's the funny thing about parents. Like, they try to be supportive. They don't understand. They don't, they have no idea what he doesn't get it. <laughs> My dad didn't understand what was going on until I started making money. He didn't get it That's until... Care about yeah, he didn't get it until I left home. And then he was like, oh, my God, what the fuck just happened? That's crazy. <laughs> but, um... So, Schultz followed me, and he's starting to, like, swipe up on my stories, like, with mm. fire emojis and stuff. So, I'm like, okay, we're getting somewhere. Getting there. You know, we're, right we're getting somewhere. Yeah. And so, he swipes up, keeps swiping up, and then... I was so exhausted. I don't give a fuck at this point. I just DM'd him, cold DM'd him, and I was like, yo, Schultz, can I edit a flagrant clip? Yeah. And he was like, yeah, sure. I didn't, I thought it wasn't really going to be a thing. Okay. I didn't know what was going on. They had Alex Jones on that week. Oh, yeah, I remember that. That thing. second Alex Jones episode. That was the fourth set, right? Was it Miami set? It was or the New York set. They New just York, got him back. Cold, yeah. And they had Alex Jones on. And I thought, because they ghosted me so many times, I'm just used to it at this point. Fair. Literally 30 minutes after Schultz said, yeah, you can do the clip, yeah. I get an unknown phone call on my phone. Oof. And it's Mark. Okay. And he's like, hey, man, uh, so happy you're going to do this flagrant clip for us. Um, it's Alex Jones. So this is kind of a big deal. Like, you've been killing it with Al's clips and stuff, but, like, put a lot of effort into this because this is going to be the one Schultz posts on his main Instagram tomorrow. I was like, okay. So I get the clip at like seven o'clock my time. Which we are in like Pacific. Now. I'm in, I live in LA okay. at the time. And I have Home Depot work from seven to like two okay. in the morning. And they need the clip at 9 a.m. my time. Oof. <laughs> so I go to, I get the clip, download it. And also, also these, I don't have good internet. Okay. So the, they're sending me the entire podcast, which is like 14 so gigabytes. sending like raws full on? Yes. Okay. And cool. so it's taken literally hours and hours of download. So I set the download, go to work, come back, it's three in the morning. I have six hours to edit this clip. I haven't even started yet. And so I remember just, I got a Red Bull, never drank a Red Bull before, <laughs> drank a Red Bull and just started editing. And it's, it, it, clips are like really simple. Yeah. Like they're not artistic expression. Wait, what was the direction from their end? Just, uh, it was, I had to edit the clip of Al, or Alex Jones saying, um, talking about like wrestling. Got it. Bam Bam Bigelow or something like that. In terms of the creative direction, did they say anything? Like subtitles, do this, cuts, do No, that, do whatever you want. So. They're like, you're killing it, like, just Go do whatever. Crazy. You have yeah. cr uh, creative control. Yeah. Okay. They're like, this needs to be done by 9 a.m. And if we don't get it, whatever. So it was like, this is my only shot. I've been working two years for this dumb fucking shot that at this point, I don't even know if I want. Wait, what's the timeline? T minus six hours at this point? It's T minus six hours at okay. this point. I'm falling apart already. I'm falling asleep. Yeah. I have though I didn't even have like a good computer at this point. Yeah. So I'm editing off literally a computer I built in seventh grade. Oof. So I'm everything's bad. Off a cracked version of Premiere, like <laughs> just everything's bad. <laughs> Everything. <laughs> and I start editing. And clips, like I said, they're not artistic expression. Like they're not yeah. they're not art. But as corny as it sounds, dude, I went. I was like, this is fucking my art. This is my moment. And so I just edit crazy on this thing. I finish it. It's 8 o'clock. I haven't slept in two days. And I submit it. It sends. And then... When did you make the deadline? I made the deadline nice. by like 15 minutes. Wild. They get it. It goes up on Schultz's Instagram. And then literally... What, did they give you feedback right away? Yeah, like it went up. They just said good, like, I sent it to Mark, and Mark was like, good job. Good job. And I was like, <laughs> son of a bitch. That's like, the life of an editor right what there. The fuck, That's the life of an editor. Good job. Yeah. This motherfucker has the audacity to say good job. I probably had a Red Bull. So then, yeah, I'm shaking. I'm not used to caffeine. <laughs> I'm fucking pussy just going like this while I'm editing. And then uh, the clip goes viral on Schultz's account. 
Wild. It does really good. And so Schultz just DMs me and he's like, yo, let's hop on a phone call um, tomorrow. I'm like, I did it. <laughs> after I, two years of being treated after like two a side years, chick. I did it, dude. After like being it. a little slut. Yeah. <laughs> on miles of stories and Schultz, like, I finally did it. And I, like, I didn't even run to my mom. Like, I just was like, I didn't tell anybody. Yeah. I was just like, I did it, man. I like. That's, I remember that's the life of an editor, like from the get go, like, and you experiencing it. Yeah. Like you, you got treated. I mean, not obviously treated like shit, because they had obviously their interests at heart, and yeah. you had yours. So they were keeping their options open. Yeah. But at the same time, you were putting all your hopes in this one basket. Yeah. I mean, I had a couple yeah. other baskets, yeah. but this was this was the basket. <laughs> it was the basket. There was no at this point. Yeah. After the amount of hours I put into it already, yeah. there was no turning back. So that was like, oh, I did it. Yeah. And then he never called me. Wait, he didn't call you? He never called me. Good lord. Yeah. Well, take I'm, me to the end of the story. I need the third act now, finally. What happens? He doesn't call me. It's two weeks. I'm yeah. working at Home Depot. I stopped doing WTF media clips. I was like, oh, I can't. Out of spite or like just... You I was rock. just like, can't do it. Dude. Okay. So I was like, everything fell apart. It's over. I'm going to community college. Like, I fucked up everything. I should have paid more attention to high school. I shouldn't have wasted my time. And I was really sad. Like, I was like... Shit, dude. Yeah. I was fucking broken, like fuck and i remember it'd been like three weeks i'm graduating the day i'm graduating i i graduate i remember walking and i post a picture of like myself like in my cap and gown like gowns, yeah. i graduate today like happy and miles swiped up and was like oh congratulations on graduating college like we're so happy for you and i was like oh no i'm not graduating college i'm Graduate high, high school. school. And he was like, how old are you? I was like, I just turned 18. And 45 seconds later, Miles was FaceTiming me. And I was like, why is Miles FaceTiming me? And I answer it. And I'm at my graduation. And I answer it. And it's Schultz's big fucking nose. <laughs> like this. And he's drunk. And he's there in a Wait, green room. What time room. is it? it? My time? I have literally just got off the stage graduating. So, so east, six o'clock. So East Coast is like what, like nine, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So nine o'clock. They're all together in, in the green room. Okay. They're gonna go do a show, and he's like, "Chifty," he's like, "I was like, what's what's, what's up, up, bro?" <laughs> and he was like, "Come to New York City and work for us." And I was like, Oof. I was like, okay. And then he was like, okay, bye. And then he hung up. And I was, and then at that moment, my mom, my dad saw it, and my dad was like, "Wait, you're gonna move to New York City?" And I was like, "Yeah." And he was like. Oh, this, he was like really happy. And he's like, this is so cool. Like, wow. And we celebrated. We went out. We had dinner. And then, yeah, long story short, I'd, I moved to New York City. I didn't know how I was going to do it. Also, it wasn't a guaranteed job. Holy shit. Good <laughs> Lord. So, <laughs> wasn't guaranteed. Schultz basically, he, we called later and like discussed it. And it was going to be a July, because it's already June at this point. Okay. A July, August summer internship. Mm, that's how they get you. Yeah. A youth enrichment program, if you will. <laughs> and so I'm like, oh, God, like, am I really going to do this for two months? I had a little bit of money saved up for okay. video editing. Were they going to pay you for the trial? Yeah, they were. Yeah, so it was a paid internship. It was, it was like decent money. So I was like, okay. okay. I get my plane ticket, for, which was a lot of my money at the time. I get an Airbnb, but not a nice Airbnb, a room in Woodside, Queens, for $1,100 oh. for a month. Okay. And uh, shared with six other people in an apartment. The worst type of people live in Airbnbs. Yeah. Long term. And, yeah, Schultz, they're recording a podcast, and I'm just sitting in, and Schultz just goes, yo, uh, they start, like, making fun of me. And this is pretty normal. Like, they're roasting me. And then Schultz just goes, oh, why don't you just come sit right here real quick? I'm like, why do, you, why do they Doing want me the in the podcast? podcast? Yeah, and he's like, he gives me a microphone. Yeah. He's like, oh, if you guys don't know who Chifty is, he's the gay kid we hired that's been killing it. And like, he's the gay kid. Is the gay kid that we hired that's <laughs> been killing it. Huh? You're not gay. I'm not gay. Okay, cool. But they thought I was gay. <laughs> they did think I was gay. <laughs> Wait, I, why? He's like a gen. It was thing. no. It was Pride Month, <laughs> and I was just trying to be an ally. And so I posted, you know, white straight dude trying to make good in the world for once. Posted a little fucking like a little repost of like. Gay people are good. Woo! Yeah. Miles is dumb fucking ass solid. Yeah. And was like, guys, I think Shifty's I think gay. Shifty's gay. 
Um, I think, you know, he's a different generation. Yeah. They were panicking. Like, there's a whole clip on the internet, but they're literally... Yeah, Schultz can tell it way better than I can, but they were spiraling. The, the, oh, yeah, the day I walk in, my first day I walk in, and they're all sitting... They had, like, a powwow before I walked in yeah. of how they were going to handle the new gay 18-year-old they just edited, they hired. And I... I sit down, I'm sitting next to Schultz, and we're all eating, like, lunch. Yeah. And Schultz is like, yeah, like, it's nice to, like, just some small talk. And then Al, you know, Al's Al. Yeah. And he's sitting next to me, and he just goes, so, uh, you got a girl or something like that? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, yeah, I, got I had a girl at the time. I was like, yeah. yeah, I got a girl. And then he was like, oh, cool. cool. And then we just sat radio silence for, like, 30 seconds. And then Schultz just goes, yeah, so, and then Al cuts him off and goes, so are, so are you gay or are you not, son? <laughs> <laughs> are you gay or not? And I was like, I'm not gay. And he was like, do you like boys or, it's okay, yeah. but do you like boys or girls? And I was like, or both, that's fine. I was like, I just like girls. And they were yeah. like, cool. Al didn't believe me. Oh, yeah. He kept grilling me for like oh. five more minutes. And then they are like, oh. All right, well, this kid's not gay. So you're not gay? No! Why would you think I'm gay? <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's a gay. wild, wild ride. Yeah. How did you, like, initially teach yourself editing in the beginning? I was... What was your, like, creative spark in the beginning? It sounds a corny-ass question, <laughs> but, like, everyone needs one. I was eight years old. Yeah. And I wanted to make Minecraft YouTube videos. As one does. Yeah. So, uh... Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. You make Minecraft YouTube videos, Don? <laughs> <laughs> yeah? Come on, dog. It's the origin story. <laughs> A little Dan TDM in this? Yeah. Come on. I'm you not know that guy. He's the guy. I'm the FIFA guy. Oh, you're a FIFA guy? Yeah. <laughs> Fuck, dude. I'm the FIFA and Madden guy. I mean, KSI videos were sick, too. Yeah, I wanted to make Minecraft YouTube videos. Yeah. And so I just learned how to edit from that, made, like, gaming funny moment videos, and then just kept doing it ever since I was eight. At any point, like, especially during, like, for editing, like, Shulton was in the back of your head, there was a voice. It was like, there may be other people who are pros, went mm -hmm. to school, editing. Was there was, like, inferiority complex in your head ever? I mean, there was, like, mostly because of my age. But then I would just yeah. watch their stuff, and I watch yeah. mine, and then I'd feel better about myself. At the end of the day, like, outputs what matters. Yeah, so I was like, oh, like, I could pretty much go tit for tat with any of these clip editors. Now, when we did the special, yeah. it was, I felt a lot of insecurity. Okay. Because I was dealing with, you know, industry veterans. For sure. And I'm just, I was 18 when I was editing the special. Yeah. I'm calling up all these uh, streamer people and, like, having to do all the stuff I didn't even know. Because editing clips and then editing, like, a movie. Yeah, are different things. Way different. Way different things. And I had to learn so much and it fucking broke me, dude. I shaved my head. At any point you had <laughs> imposter syndrome? Like, yeah, like every day. Like, we'd walk in, like, we had to do this colorist thing. Yeah. And I was like, had to be in charge of like making sure the colorist knew what he was doing. So I sat for hours with this, this dude named Keith. Shout out Keith. And um, yeah, we, we walked in. And it's like the studio that does Marvel movies. Cool. And I'm this fucking 19 year old kid walking in and I'm going to tell him what to do. And I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> this dude's 45, has a fucking uh, Marvel in his measure. Yeah, he has Marvel in his measure. He does fucking all these other shows. Like, he probably knows better than I do. But then I just went in and just did it. Nailed it. And then you just, you learn and you're like, oh, that wasn't that bad. You know? There's obviously the open end question like, should people go to college or not? Mm -hmm. And obviously, for lawyers, engineers, doctors, it's a different thing. Yeah. But like, with your experience and with all that, behind you let's say you have a kid someday yeah. and he wants to work in the in this industry like the digital industry not the tv not movies what's your take on like going to school versus not going to school for like film editing this kind of stuff if he wants to be he wants to work specifically in content creation yeah for like social media and stuff he doesn't need to go to college like i feel like it would put him behind honestly mm -hmm. oh, why behind um because when you go to film, like I have a really close friend, his name's Shib. He went to NYU film school. And he he told me, he was like, yo, like, um, they teach you, like, you're analyzing Martin Scorsese movies every day. Mm. That's not going to help you learn how to make you, a you, poppy Mr. Beast video. Yeah. And I think those are great. Like, we should still have people watching Martin Scorsese and and breaking that down and learning how to make good movies. Because mm -hmm. clips aren't movies. They're not. Like, we can't. We can't mistake a, uh, mistake a Logan Paul video for The Irishman. They're two different things. Obviously. But if my kid wanted to specifically be a YouTuber, you just got to make YouTube videos. You, there's no place that can teach you how to do it 
You just have to keep learning how to do it yourself. So who did you learn from on YouTube? Myself. I just kept trying it every day and I would watch like YouTube tutorials and stuff every once in a while, but no like specific person. It was just so like that's like the more technical answer, like how to like, you know, like premiere edits and uh -huh. like after effects, whatever. But like I'm talking in terms of like storytelling and putting down a narration. Was there anyone like Casey or whatever you're looking up to? Um Yeah, the people I watched. Okay. Probably like Casey Neistat. I watched a lot of like gaming videos. Yeah. Um a lot of Minecraft YouTubers taught me like a lot of like story making because in their videos they would it was a video game, but they still uh -huh. try to make a story Tell around story, it. Yeah. yeah. And so I would just watch that, and I was really inspired. And so There's I tried to There's a British kid called like Tommy in it. Tommy in it. Yeah, yeah, he does it now. He's pretty good. He's more of like that Mr. Beast area, yeah. but he does a good job at making, like, um, you know, stories out of a sandbox video game, Minecraft. So, yeah, but I don't think kids need college that's, to do this. That's such a funny thing, like, because, like, a kid can, like, obviously, like, teach himself or herself how to edit mm -hmm. videos for social and, like, graphics and whatever. But the problem, which I still see, and which you saw, obviously, is like, you know, putting that first step in. And that's the only thing which college helps with. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, when college has like, you know, and just like companies coming for like jobs or whatever, mm -hmm. you can do that. Whereas like for someone who has not gone to college, but they're really, really good at what they do. They don't have those connects, if you may. Oh, you're saying college just gives you the connection? Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. And I think that you not going to college yeah. um, is going to put you at a slight disadvantage to get those connections. But... Instagram exists. Correct. So if you're like when I was in high school, I literally would wake up and DM 30 people on Instagram every day. And I know that sounds like Gary Vee annoying, like yeah, fucking hustle. hustle, grind set, Sigma mindset yeah. bullshit. <laughs> but it's true. I did do that. Yeah. And it worked. It, it yeah. put me in. I got to meet like the real goats that do like the babies music videos. Wild. I got to do like music videos for like, I don't know if you know who Landy Cube is, but like, nah. like just a bunch of like people in LA that. I had no, I was fucking 15, had no business doing. Yeah. And I would just lie about my age and fucking DM them like every day. And a lot of, no one, I mean, if you go through my like, general tab, yeah. it's just sent, 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 sent. And not as much now, but yeah. that it was just flooded. And then for the 50 that I sent, one would respond. And so that's the one thing I think which creatives lack, even I lack. Mm -hmm. I'm, how old am I? I'm 26. Mm -hmm. And like when I was like, I don't know, like, just kind of like stepping in jobless, homeless, legitimately at your age, like not having any gigs whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Like I didn't have the insight of like just DMing people, yeah. which sounds like bonkers. Like why would you not DM people for a job? Mm -hmm. That's the only reason I wanted like an umbrella of a college, if you may, to help me with when I send the resume, people would be like, oh, he is not homeless. He has a degree, whatever. Yeah. And what I'm trying to say is like for kids who are really good at their at creative stuff, the other side of the brain, the right side of the brain, doesn't really comprehend the fact that you have to show your work to other people mm -hmm. to get the gig. Yeah, 100%. I think the YouTubers that we see now that are big yeah. aren't the best YouTubers. I think they're Expand the best. On that. Hold on. Expand on that. I think they're the, like, I don't think they're the best creators, okay. per se. I think... They're the best YouTubers. They're the best YouTubers. They're yeah. not the best creators yeah. because you have to be very creative to do your thing. But, like, okay, yeah. Logan Paul. Very creative, very smart, um, very good at what he does. Yeah. Also a businessman. Wildly successful. He understands. Yeah. He understands like he has his prime shit. He yeah. has his fucking crypto companies. Yeah. He has all this shit that he has on the left. Yeah. He understands that I have to do this. Like he's playing a game. The thumbnails are a game. Everything's a game. Ever since he was a kid, you have to get that. Somebody can be like, there's YouTubers I'm sure with like no subscribers yeah that are making movies probably. are making fucking beautiful movies that yeah. can make you cry yeah no one will ever see them because they they're not are too much of an artist they're yeah. not playing the game it's it's all yeah that's the thing like separating the romantic aspect of it because like you have to like decide when you're a kid hey do i want to make youtube videos or do i want to make movies yeah. i'm not saying they are like always mutually exclusive but sometimes you have to like play the game for the sake of it if you want to make a living off of it 100 percent. and there is a game yeah like for example, my YouTube channel. Yeah. It only has two thousand subscribers because I don't play a game. Yeah. I don't really care about it. You're making a living. Whatever. Yeah. I don't. I don't really. I don't really care about it that much, right? But my job at the end of the day is getting as many eyeballs on Schultz as possible. That's your job. You get paid for it. The reason why I got hired is because I went, "Yo, you don't have a TikTok account. Let me make you a TikTok account." You and then that yeah, to Schultz. Uh huh. Okay. And he had. I think he had one and it had twenty-two thousand followers. Yeah. And I grew up on t like I grew up on the internet. I grew up on musically. Like I understood TikTok, and so I just played the game. And now he was like, he got like five hundred million views on TikTok in like the three months I was working on it. 
from nothing. So it's like you have to play a game, and I don't think I'm personally ready to play that game with my own shit. Yeah. And it's something I'm gonna have to get get over myself. Yeah. But when it, it's it's easier when it's not yours. Yeah, because to play any. You're game. not being vulnerable. Exactly. So yeah, that's yeah. the main thing. Because yeah. like, it's one thing to be vulnerable. In, in your job hunt, which you were, because, like, yeah. you literally, like, slotted yourself out oh, for, yeah. like, two years to get the job, yeah. which is one thing. But it's another thing to, like, put yourself out online. Mm -hmm. Like, put yourself, put your personality online. Mm -hmm. And because, like, a lot of creators, they put some ideas out. They want to talk about stuff, tech, movies, reviews, whatever. But, like, creators like Casey or, like, TikTokers like Victoria, like, they are, like, their product is themselves. And the level of vulnerability which comes with it, it's, like, immense. Cause like if someone dislikes the video, that they just don't, they're not disliking the video. They're also disliking you. Yeah. That's yeah. I don't know. I can't comprehend that obviously because I'm the back end producer. Yeah. And I don't know how people do it, honestly. Yeah, I mean I read comments from just the podcast and I'm like, ugh, it's the worst. It is so. Wait, hold on. So I want to talk about you moving to New York finally, and okay. so from West Coast to East Coast, okay. what was the shift like in terms of like creatives around you? Um. I mean, I was just a kid in high school when I left L.A., so yeah. it was like I wasn't really around creatives. Okay. Um, like, no one from my high school really was, like, editing all the time, so I was kind of alone. And then in New York, it it's definitely more in your face. It's more hustle, 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 which is nice. I do like that. That's probably the only main difference I ever saw. I, I can't really speak on L.A. because I wasn't really old enough to really be in any Got spaces. It. So after moving to uh, New York, getting the job, so at this point, what's your day in life look like? When I first moved? Or even now, what's your day in life? Day in the life now? Um, it depends. Usually I just wake up. Um, usually I'll, I'll like check how our clips are doing and like the analytics and stuff like that. And I'll go to the gym and go to the studio. And then if we're recording, we'll record. If not... I usually sit down with Schultz and have like a meeting with him about like, oh, this is what's happening for the day. This is what's going on. So breaking down like, oh, we have to have this one come out this day and that one come on this day. And then I go bulk edit for four hours, five hours. And then I go home. In that phase of editing, because like right now at this point, obviously, how long, how long have you had this job for now? About a year, year and a half. About a year. So you kind of have like a rough formula, obviously, yeah. of editing. Like how does the cold open work? What to go with so that you can have the retention going on and all mm -hmm. that stuff. So you have a formula already, which works, if mm -hmm. you may. How much of that do you rely on, and how much do you allow yourself to experiment and be creative? So for clips, I don't experiment at all. It's just, I want to go viral on TikTok. Okay. I'm a slut for views. I don't give a fuck. Because you're playing the game. Playing the game. So it's a formula. I'll literally, I have a conveyor belt. So I'll open up Premiere. I'll have six clips cut mm -hmm. ready, throw them into Premiere. I'll caption every single one. Okay. Then I'll go and resize every single one. And then I'll just hold make on. A just so ball. that people who don't edit understand, how long does it take for you to caption and resizing? Um, I could probably nail one out in like twenty five minutes. And how long of a clip is that? Sixty seconds. Fair. Okay. And then I'll do that for each one. And then Premiere actually has a really good auto reframe. They do, cause like especially right now, I think the latest update had like the captioning thing, mm -hmm. which I didn't find out. I just like one day like my recommendation feed like you can caption yeah. Premiere. Like, what? Yeah. Auto captions are. Decent premiere. Yeah. They're getting better. They're not great yet, but yeah. they're getting better. But they still don't have like the font space and ride down there. The horrible. Uh, pisses you can, like, me off. It, yeah. Whatever. Okay. Yeah. But um, yeah. Like I'd edit in like a conveyor belt, okay. and then by the time I'm done, I have five clips ready. Uh huh. And then I'll schedule on each social platform, and then I go to bed. That's my day. Check the views. Check the views in the morning, mm -hmm. right before the gym. Feel okay, good so that's little. the game. Where where do you allow yourself to experiment and be creative? Or do you do that even? Um, I experiment in the bigger projects. Fair. I experimented in the special. Were they receptive to your input? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it was the that special. That feels good, right? Yeah, it was the special was me, Schultz, and Mark on Adderall <laughs> in a room for six months for 18 hours a day. The, the editing process, yeah. you mean? Okay. Yeah. Walk me through it. Well, the grind of editing the special. Oh, God. Because, like, what's at stakes is way more than, obviously, yeah. a YouTube show. Yeah, it was pretty brutal. <laughs> Holy shit, The Rock just reposted. Four shows. Okay. Um, four shows taped. He had the same outfit in every single one. Okay. Because it didn't feel like it, so. Yeah, yeah. Good job. It was four Obviously. shows. That I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. It was four shows. Um, I think we had 16 angles per show. So 16 Holy times shit. four. I don't know math. 64. Yeah, yeah. 64 going, going on. Um, basically, I built each show into a multi-camp sequence in Premiere. Okay. 
Then we went in and watched each one and went, oh, this from here to here is funny, from here okay. to here is funny, and then built it. Okay. And then it was my job to go in and go, oh, show one to show four, make this look seamless, show four to show three. And we had like a pretty, me and Mark had a pretty good block of like, oh, this this runs. It was like an hour. It lo- looked good. Schultz walked in and goes, this is the worst thing I've ever seen in my <laughs> life. This is terrible. And so it got to the point, Schultz is so particular with, Obviously, with editing, he's a perfectionist, and it's made me a better editor. At first, Wait, I was on. like, side note, okay, I realized how how much in the back end Schultz thinks about from the third or fourth part of his podcast. Like yeah. thirty minutes down the line, forty minutes down the line, he gets vulnerable and uh-huh. starts talking about editing, uh-huh. like back end stuff, and I'm mm-hmm. like, holy shit, no. he's there till yes. you hit publish. Um, sometimes, like he usually. He, yeah, for better, lack of better words, yeah, he's there yeah. to get published, yeah. But, yeah, for the special, it would literally came down to the point where he would, we'd watch it, and he'd go, stop. He would say, um, one line, yeah. and then we cut to a new show. So every line in the special is a different show. Holy shit. If you looked at the fucking, I have a picture of it, but the timeline. The timeline, dude. Literally oh, looks like lines. an abomination. It's terrifying to look at. And we had everything color-coded. So sh- uh, show one was red, yeah. show two was blue, and so on and so How forth. How did you guys match the color grading properly? Because the lighting was probably is a different thing. <sighs> the color grading about made me shoot myself. I'm going to be honest with you. Because every, every set probably had a different light. No, so they did the they matched the it. studio of Paramount um, yeah. and Austin did a pretty good job at that. Okay. The only problem is the pyrotechnics decided to leave the, the smoke on in show one and show three at the beginning which loses the contrast from the image. Obviously, yeah. There's no contrast and shows one to three. But Schultz, instead of being, you know, easier on the edit yeah. and being like, oh, we'll just use this uh, joke from show two Dude. all the way through. He went, no, show one's funnier and show three's funnier. So we had to find a way. It was me and Keith, the guy I talked about, yeah. in a room for three days going and adding, like literally CGIing smoke into certain angles and taking out and adding fake contrast and using like AI to like upscale Just images like frame by frame by frame, frame by frame. frame it took days to export the special because of all the shit Keith did but it was literally me and him in a room going oh raise the blacks 15% um the sh- the highlights are too hot on this angle the whole special because of the smoke and we had to match every show because of the smoke it was a nightmare I, I had no idea it was like so many different shows I thought yeah. it was one show no it's four yeah yeah, that, that it was pretty brutal. That's a secret right there. Yeah. That's the industry secret right Four there. Four shows, baby. Good job. <laughs> um, so, obviously, Andrew and you guys have, like, in, inculcated, like, this insane community. Uh-huh. And so, if you go on the comment section, people are talking about you guys all the time. Yeah. So, what? how does that feel like, the fact that you are not just making content, like, in the 10 era and just putting it out and not, instead, you are actually making content for a community? What's that feel like? It was different. Because you're, like, serving a community because I'm... The, giving you an example of like someone who edits for like I don't know like TV or news mm-hmm. or whatever because they have no idea who the people on yeah, the receiving not. end are yeah. right but you you do what does I that mean, feel like it's like everything there's positives negatives positives are like oh like people DM me all the time and it's like say nice things but yeah. also people on Reddit like say mean shit all the time Oof. and so you have to read both or like people be like oh you fucking suck or like you, you just you just got to deal with like, if there's an edit, that go, like, for example, Miles edits the podcast. People know this. And if the podcast goes out late, Miles has to deal with 100 DMs from people being like, you fucking suck, you're bad at your job, like, all this other stuff. So you just got to get used to it. But I think the positive outweighs the negative, in my personal opinion. No, the fact that you, at your young age, are exposed to that mm-hmm. is, like, insane. Yeah. Because, like, people, even, like, veterans, like, I work with, like, boomers all the time, mm-hmm. and... <laughs> they have they are like they have the privilege of like not knowing who yeah. their audience is yeah. and getting a steady paycheck regardless yeah whereas you are like kind of like in service to your audience yeah which is an insane experience trust me yeah and how do you think how do you at this point not let it affect your creativity like do you create a wall like have, i'm gonna do my job regardless of what people feel about it my job is to make andrew happy yeah i mean it's like i i don't think i'm big enough in the group to really get the amount of hate that other people I know do. Mm-hmm. So I don't have to deal with it as as much. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't really fuck with me. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm sure if it was times 10, it would. But as of yet, like, it's not, it hasn't got to a point where I'm, like, second-guessing everything I do. 
That's good. Which is good. That's good. Okay, changing gears a little bit. I want to talk about you're Gen Z, right? Obviously. Yeah. Okay, so you were born into like TikTok and YouTube simultaneously. And TikTok and YouTube are obviously like dramatically different platforms. Mm -hmm. And creating content for TikTok is different than creating content for YouTube. Mm -hmm. Not to sound like a geriatric fucking, I don't know, boomer. <laughs> but like I, I sometimes get worried about creative kids who whose first exposure to creativity or content is TikTok and them not realizing that this is not storytelling. Mm -hmm. This is actually a part of a experience where content matters more than creators. Do you agree with that or not? I mean, yes and no. I think and the TikTok can be used for anything. It's just a shorter video. Mm -hmm. So there there are TikTokers that use stories, and I think that's great. Um, I think it's the same way that my parents felt about me fucking watching Minecraft videos instead of movies. They didn't really get it. And they just kind of felt like it was just like, I don't know, like just video games and stuff. So I think the the older like millennials and stuff like that are probably like, I don't get TikTok. Like it's not storytelling. And I'm sure there will be a lot of kids that come out of this TikTok generation knowing how to do storytelling. I don't think it's the end of storytelling and social content. I just think it's been, you just have to go look for it. That's what I mean to say. No, yeah, I mean, tech, uh, trust me, like, dude, yeah. I love TikTok, I love my feed, I love my For You page. Everything's good, but, like, I just think about young kids who are, like, stepping in the industry, them thinking that, like, I'll give you my example. My, I was editing videos for other people working in the industry, but the first time I realized that a, an editor or a filmmaker himself can be his own subject mm -hmm. was when Casey started vlogging. Mm -hmm. That was like my eye-opening experience that someone in a vlog can lay down a three-act narrative mm -hmm. and like uh, do it perfectly, mm -hmm. seamlessly as hell. I'm comparing that to if I were to like see TikTok videos f as my first medium, I would always think about the way to tell stories is probably filming yourself on your phone and just putting text on screen. Mm -hmm. So that's like my only concern sometimes. And I think about it, like obviously it doesn't affect me, but I just think about like, you know, like kids who are in high school right now and them not learning the hard way of like, hey, this is a setup, this is a conflict, that's a resolution, like that's how you tell a story. So that's like my only concern sometimes. I think the younger kids yeah. might have a harder time like about that. But I think the kids that are making social content right now on TikTok, either A, don't give a fuck about storytelling or making actual movies. Like I don't think Vinny Hacker is trying to make the next <laughs> Irishman. <laughs> I think he just cares about looking hot and getting Amazon brand deals. But, you know, I, I do understand what you're saying about, like, there are kids that are going to look at this and want to make movies. I just don't think it's the place that they'll look and go, oh, this is this is storytelling. Like, I don't think a thirst trap is storytelling. No, it's not. Yeah. No, I mean, m again, I hate saying back in my day, but, like, uh, when people, like, in, when I thought of, like, hey, I want, want to get, get, get good at, editing and filmmaking, I would just like film random stuff and like try to think about, is there a story here? Is there a story here? And right now, and obviously the output was not promised because I had no fucking clue what the video was going to be when mm -hmm. I left my house with the camera. Mm -hmm. But right now, if you live in New York and you're like 16 years old and you want to make a TikTok video and you can just like go watch New Square Park and like interview kids all mm -hmm. the time and like that's uh, output. So you have the output ready. Mm -hmm. So that's a really good advantage. So like at the end of the day, if you want to play the game and if you want to just keep putting videos out, you can do that. And you have like better means way to do that. So that's lovely because at the end of the day, the more people, the more kids who are out want to be with cameras are with cameras, I'm happy. Yeah. But like you just have to learn the storytelling the hard way. Yeah. No, I, I would agree with that. I think that YouTube isn't going anywhere. I don't think movies are going anywhere. So I think the kids that are my age and even younger, um, if they want to do storytelling, they'll go watch movies or they'll go watch even Marvel movies. They have great storytelling sometimes. Like they'll go watch movies or they'll go watch YouTube videos. Like there's always going to be a way for kids to learn storytelling. I think the kids that you're talking about that are making interviews in Washington Square Park or like the side talk videos. Shout yeah. out, shout out Trent. I shout love out side Jack. Talk. Love you guys. Side talk's great. Um, they're not trying to make stories. Yeah. So I think if you want to make a story. There's ways that, like, kids, like, I have a young cousin. She wants to be a YouTuber. And she's already doing, like, she has a little, her little phone camera. And she's, like, going and, like, shooting her cat and, like, making a whole story about it. And she's fucking eight. So I think. That's great. Yeah, the generation's fine. Like, I don't think there's going to be kids that aren't going to have a hard time making stories. I just think this is a new 
thing. And I, I look at TikTok kind of how I look at junk food. At junk food? Junk food. Okay. It's junk food for your brain. It's just constant dopamine hits every 30 seconds and 60 seconds. Now, I'm going to make a lot of money off TikTok. Yeah. And rotting people's brains and i've accepted that yeah but i'm not gonna i don't use tiktok so you don't get high on your own supply no yeah i, I don't think it's good for your brain it's awful for your brain but i'm gonna use it that's the game and make money and that sounds like shit but at least i'm being honest you know no, you're doing great at it um uh, for how long and this is not a dig at editor at mm-hmm. like video editors obviously for how long are you okay making content for other people um, at any point do you think about that you want to be the subject? I mean, I'm young right now and I yeah. just started. Um, it is fun to make your own content, but I don't feel like I'm pressured to do it yet. Mm-hmm. I feel like probably in the next year, I'll probably start doing my own thing a little bit. Still, you know, doing everything I'm doing now. But at the end of the day, I do. My dream is since I was little was to be a YouTuber. Mm-hmm. And right now I'm just learning as much as I, I'm at YouTube University pretty much. I'm have access to channels with millions of subscribers on my phone. Like I can see the analytics. I understand what's going on. I'm uploading to them. So I kind of am just learning as much as I can right now. Mm -hmm. And eventually when it's time and and I'm not, not in a rush, maybe two years, one year, uh, I'll go out, not on my own, but just start uploading videos and understanding the game more. Cause I've been uploading videos since 2014, but I was at the problem that we talked about earlier where I didn't get, I didn't understand the game. I just made YouTube videos for fun. And I didn't get, oh, there's a game to play. Like, for example, I would upload YouTube videos at like Overwatch or whatever. And they were actually decently edited YouTube videos for a 15 year old. <laughs> and I would edit them and they'd get like 2,000 views. And I was like, why? What am I doing wrong? Like, I don't get any subscribers. I don't get it. I'm posting videos for fun. Yeah. And then I played the game one time, and the video did really well. What was the game you played? Um, uh, whatever. There was like I saw. I'm really into VHS cameras. Okay. No, I saw the video. Yeah, yeah, that video. Yeah, and I just I was like, oh, like I, there's a niche here, and I could play the game here, okay. and then it did good. But the thing is, you played the game, but you still made a story out of it. Exactly. At the end of the day, you put a narration in there. Yeah. There was like an actual story there. So and that was the goal. I that still was wanted the goal. To be. Yeah. No, that was you nailed it. So good yeah. job there. Being a creative in New York, mm-hmm. like how do you think it evolved you? which you otherwise would not have been exposed to who are in L.A.? Just speeds you up. New York grows, grows you up quicker. Like, I've yeah. probably aged seven years in the last year. Yeah. Wait, how it, old are you now? 19? 19. Okay. Wow. Yeah. It, and like I said, I had a Britney moment. Like, you go yeah. through a lot. of New York winters, fuck New York winter. Yeah. I never saw snow before. Oh, you're an L.A. boy, yeah. Never saw snow in my life, and I'm dealing yeah. with snow. I don't even have snow boots. I'm in, like, Jordan 1s walking through the snow like an idiot. Yeah. Wearing Vans. <laughs> Still don't have snow boots. I got through the whole winter without buying them. Yeah. And it got to a point where Schultz had to get me a coat because I was coming <laughs> to work in three hoodies, shivering, walking. During the special, it was 12 degrees. Yeah. I'd walk to work every day. <laughs> Fuck New York winters. You going to keep living here? I mean, it's hard. I've gotten offers to go back to L.A. Really? Yeah. And sometimes I think about it, but right now I'm just like, I'm on a train and yeah. I want to see how far this train goes. Yeah. And I don't want to leave just yet. So I'll deal with more winters. You know, like that two-year period when you were like bouncing back and forth, not yeah. realizing if it was a job or not, not, mm-hmm. realize, not realizing whether or not you, you're going to go to college, which is like an insane cloud of yeah. uncertainty. Yeah. If you had to like, you know, sound, it's going to sound corny as hell, like tell your younger self, yeah, like what you should do, what's your message? Um, Third person. Somebody is going through the same thing right now. Okay. So at the time, I thought I only had one option which was to do the Schultz shit. Okay. But in reality, I had other options. Like, it wasn't the end of the world. I put so much pressure on myself to get it done, and obviously it worked out. But if it didn't, it might have broke me. I don't know. So I would say don't put as much pressure on yourself. Everything's going to be okay. Yeah. And just keep keep working. And if this shit falls through, you're so young, something else is going to happen. Like today, if I got a call and everything's done, Schultz got hit by a car, and I'm done. Everyone's leaving. I'd still be okay. It would suck, and I'd be really sad. But at the end of the day, I'm 19. Like, I can go to college still. I had good grades. Another follow-up on that is, like, you also, like, created without knowing what's going to happen. But yeah. at the same time, you would put your heart and soul into the edits. Yeah. 
right? That's another thing which I think is, which I think like people have to understand. Yeah, you just have to have pride in your work. Correct. Yeah. Like, and if you if you don't love it, yeah, you're not gonna make it. If you don't love what you're doing and put 110 percent effort into everything you're doing, it's not gonna work out. Love that. Hey, thanks for your time. Thanks, Ty. Perfect.